can I say anything? Let me do something first. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> We're going to sing another song in a minute. But, uh, but ask the question. And uh, the Lord moved in me to uh, turn things sideways a little bit. And he asked the question about the church. And why are you here? And what's the nature of the body of Christ of which we are part? And uh, I thought about uh, a couple of things and the Lord impressed me to to have you turn to Ephesians chapter 5. We'll, uh, we will maybe just uh, take the sermon that was intended for today by me and move it to next week because God wants us to hear what we're here for. In Ephesians chapter 5, beginning in verse 25, this is a, uh, a scripture we typically use sometime around Father's Day uh, to talk to men about their love life. But I want, to, I want us to read the rest of this and, and read it in the context of the church. Husband, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. You see the comparison there. Uh, sometimes I think we take marriage uh, not so seriously. But in the same way, we don't take the relationship we have as the church seriously either. Verse 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Uh, and that would take a whole other sermon just to, to talk about that verse. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Wait a minute. He's talking about the church. He's talking about you and me in our relationship to one another and with Christ. Rightly today, we emphasize that we, everyone as individuals, need to have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ based on what He did at the cross, dying there for our sins, Sin is a killer. The wages of sin is death. Jesus took upon Himself our death hanging there on the cross. That's a fact. We need that personal relationship. We need to know Him personally. But here, Paul is emphasizing not that personal relationship that we have with Christ, for the forgiveness of our sins and for eternal life forever. But he's talking about the relationship we have with Christ and with one another in an entity that is called the church. Look around you and you will see the other members of the body. Now look at your arm. Or look at my arm. Do you see the, the individual cells that make up my arm? As seamless as this arm is, and as strong as it used to be, I mean it might be, uh, it's made up of individual cells which are vital and important to the makeup of the arm. The body of Christ is made up the same way. You look around here in this auditorium today and think about all the people that are not here. That's sort of like if you could see my arm dissected. Parts of it missing. 
uh, I'd be hurting. We all ought to be hurting when the body's not full and complete. And that's what he's talking about here. And the reason we meet together is not only for worship, but that this might take place in 26 and 27, that He might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the Word. If He is cleansing and sanctifying His body and part of the body is not here, that part of the body is missing the cleansing and sanctifying. That He might present it to Himself a glorious church. When did we ever stop and think about what a glorious church is? Remember that verse we quoted last week? I think I referenced it today. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The function of the church is to bring the glory back. That we become a glorious church. That's what God has in mind. Not having spot or wrinkle I looked at myself the other day. And Aaron's already laughing. <laughs> and I saw spots and wrinkles. And you know what I realized? I haven't been taking care of myself. God does not want an old wrinkled up, spotted, messed up, corrupted church. We look around us today and we see what we think of as church and uh, God is saying, I want to spit you out of my mouth. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Does that describe us? You know why it doesn't? because we haven't taken the Word of God seriously. We've become haphazard, going along with the ways and the things of this world. I talk to truck drivers every once in a while and say, how's the Christian life going for you? And they'll go, oh, well, I'm doing the best I can, but it does struggle. And you know what? They're trying to live a worldly Christian life and you can't do it. There are people trying to have a worldly Christian church and you can't do it. It's either one or the other. It can't be both. Holy and without blemish. That's what the church of Jesus Christ looks like. Let's read some more. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. Oh, let's forget that part. <laughs> <laughs> Serious, why is that in there? We want to forget that part. We want to say, well, God's sovereign and whatever God wants is going to happen and so we're just going to sit back and let God do whatever God does. Let me tell you that if you want to have the marriage that God intended for you to have, it's going to take work on your part. That's what he's saying. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loves his wife loves himself. That's what Jesus Christ has done for us. And that's what he wants to do in his church. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourishes it and cherishes it, even as the Lord the church. Is it becoming obvious what he's talking about? That a lot of our churches resemble our marriages? Why do we gather together? Uh, for the same reason that married couples gather together. Because they love each other. Hopefully. Let me tell you a little something, and, and this gets vitally personal. 
this morning, Beverly woke me up and told me I was running late. I mean, I just woke up and I'm already late. <laughs> and I looked at her and she had, still had her bed clothes on. And I'm going, something's not right here. I'm already late and she's not even ready to go. And the way it turned out, Beverly uh, didn't feel well because of, I don't know, all kinds of stuff. But she didn't feel well today and so she had intended to stay home. And I don't know if it was the look on my face or what, but she decided to come. You know why? Because I'm lost without her. I'm empty without her. I don't know how to function without her. I don't know how to get up in the morning without her. I guess I would still be asleep if she didn't come and wake me up. And she said, I just don't feel like I want to and, and it must have been that stricken look on, you know, the, the deer in the headlights look. I said, okay, what am I going to do? I can't go to church by myself. We are one. We not, may not like it all the time. But we are one. In the same way that the church is one, the people who are not here today ought to be excruciatingly unhappy because they are not with the body today. When I miss, when I'm not here, I, I don't remember when I wasn't here. I, I don't remember when, I, when I'm not here, I'm, I'm, I don't know what to do. When I'm not with Beverly, I don't know what to do. And that's what he's talking about here. Why do we get together? Because we can't do other than get together. Let's read some more. Verse 30. For we are members of His body, of His flesh, and of His bones. And somebody comes along and wants to cut off your arm, and you say, Okay, I can do without it for a while. And isn't science wonderful? After I've done without it for a while and it's been on ice, they can reattach it and make it almost as good as new. You want to try that? But that's how we are. We are members of His body, His flesh, his bones. How can we be somewhere else when the body is here? We haven't taken this seriously. We haven't really taken what this Christian life is all about. If we did, we'd be different. In verse 31. Verse 31 is an interesting verse because this is at least the third time in Scripture that it's repeated. For this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. Somebody said, marriage is a 50-50 proposition. No, it's not. Well, it's a 100% proposition. Not really. It's the doing away of two individuals and welding them together, binding them together, bringing them together into a total different something that is unexplainable in human terms. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, his family, his heritage, his ancestry, and shall be joined unto his wife. 
the, the word in the Hebrew originally would have been super glue. Super glue. I put a linoleum floor in a house one time, and where the seams were, there was, there was a, a chemical that you put. You laid this linoleum down side by side, and then you, you uh, put this chemical on it, and it fused those two pieces of linoleum together in such a way that you could not tell where the line was, where they joined. Not only that, you couldn't separate it. You'd have to tear them completely up. You know that's why second and third families don't work very well. I mean, we make them work and do the best we can, but when you tear something up, it's hard to put things back together the way they're supposed to be. And God has super glued us together as husbands and wives. Now I want you, this isn't a, uh, this isn't a message about husbands and wives per se, but if you don't get the clue, there's something wrong with you. This is about the church. That's what he says in verse 32. This is a great mystery. Yep. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. He's not focusing specifically on husbands and wives, but they ought to get the message. What he's doing is he is focusing on our relationship with each other in the church. This is a great mystery. I speak concerning Christ and the church. And we need to get the message today. We really do. Because churches are going to be under the gun in this new society. The new norm is that we as Christians are going to be under a more intense scrutiny than we've ever been. If we're not willing to be completely totally committed to leave all of that other stuff behind and be joined with Christ and one another, we will not survive what's coming down. I felt like we needed to say that today. In the very beginning, these words, leaving father and mother and joined into the wife and they too shall be one. In the very beginning, those words were said by Adam when he realized his connection to Eve. In Matthew 19, I believe it is, Jesus said these same words. Said them again. Talking about a man and his wife. And here Paul makes that comparison in these words. But he's applying, applying it to the church. It's a serious and as momentous as that. Those who are not here today uh, ought to be feeling at a loss because they're not with the body. Whatever they're doing today, um, they're not with the body. You see, what we want to do is we want to make this a spiritual thing, not a physical thing. God makes it both. God makes it both. We cannot just say, oh, well, it's a mystical deal. God wants us to understand that the body of Christ is real and it's corporal. It is a body. It's not just a bunch of loose spirits uh, floating around until eternity. It's who we are today. If you belong to Jesus Christ, guess what? You belong to every one of the rest of us. Whether you like it or not. And it's a, it's a bond, that, that song we sing every once in a while, it's a bond that cannot be broken. Because it's the bond that God made. He super glued us together. Think about that, okay? while we go through the rest of the service today. And you think about that. 
This is the message that God has for us today. We are one in Christ and one with one another. And if we realize that, if we recognize that, then it all makes sense when Jesus said, love one another. As I have loved you, so love one another. Because you're part of the body of Christ. 